<laughs> of course, I was a part of the guilds. I'm sorry. I didn't think about that as being, that's the main say of the Forming Arts Center in the guilds. Yes, yes, I am. Well, I got introduced by uh, Georgia Spooner, who I had known, and she was a friend of mine, sort of. Georgia Spooner, you know, started the guild system. And uh, I loved her. And we started then, and the fact that I, I said, well, I can't join anything because I work. She said, oh, you can still join and be a member and work. I said, I can, and I was thrilled to this, so I joined right away. And I joined the Chopin chapter in Laguna because they started meeting on a time that I could go. And uh, then we started doing food and housing and that sort of thing. And then some people, you know, just sold candy or things like that. And so I joined the Chopin chapter, and that's when, right now I belong to Camelot, which is another guild, and Chopin d disappeared. I think it should be quite important to continue the guilds because I think they've been such a tremendous asset to the community, to the world. And that's how we learn about so many of these things. And I think for the center, we're always going to need the guilds. I mean, that's my opinion. And I'd like to see them go on forever. I would. I've always been involved in different things like the Performing Arts Center. I joined them right away to work for them. My goodness sakes, and that was the greatest joy of my life. But I worked for them every day of my life. And then every day that man would send me home the huge sheaf of papers. He says, how many people, tell me, take that home on the weekend. Tell me how many people you think in there can give us $1,000. I'll never forget that. And I would struggle, and when I came back, I seemed to know a lot of people that I thought could give. And he congratulated me, I know, on the end of time. And uh, the first day, that was the greatest joy in my life, was working for the Farming Arts Center. And I'll never forget that. And I loved the Farming Arts Center so much. I joined the Center Club at that time. There was a thing you could join the Center Club so half the money went to the Forming Arts Center, and I did that. On dress rehearsal night, I feed the symphony orchestra. I take them sandwiches and bake them cakes. <laughs> I do it just for hell, just for the hell of it. <laughs> I don't uh, get any remuneration for it, but they do so much for me. What difference does it make? I love to feed the orchestra. They always eat the chocolate cake first, but so do I. <laughs> Yeah, I do that. That's my one claim to fame for the orchestra. They made, it's made my life, the arts. I just can't imagine anyone not having some part of the arts in their life, maybe some part they can afford. It changes your whole life. It adds enrichment to your life, the arts. Mm, I love it. Uh, and we're so lucky in Orange County, you know, where you have that opportunity to get involved in that. I like it a lot. Oh, we were showing a house in Laguna. I spent the day with Henry's mother. I was so excited about that. I was the only one there by the end of the day, and she was still there, and we spent the day together over there. Oh, that was wonderful. That was a house in Laguna. Oh, I fascinated with that woman. Absolutely fascinating. And she would sit and talk to me. I was really impressed. There's a busy woman who was an important woman, and I was just thrilled to death. I had her all to myself. <laughs> I spent that time with her. All right, with the rest of the day, it was the end of the day, and I think she was tired. So she sat down and talked to me. And they wrote an article about my hat, you know. 
two different people wrote the articles about my hats. And uh, they asked me who the most important man in Orange County was. I said, well, Henry, of course. And then <laughs> I saw him in town like, the next week. I said, oh my God, Henry's going to hug me. I know he is. <laughs> and of course he did. He thrilled me to death, but scared me too. <laughs> but he hugged me. And uh, oh, I think the family is wonderful. She laughed at me. <laughs> yeah, we were in there doing something and I had a hat on. Well, that's how it happened. She was across the table from me, quite a ways away, and she looked at me and she just started laughing. I thought, oh dear, <laughs> and it was my hat. And then she came over and talked to me. And she was with a girl from her own country that I couldn't understand a word she was saying. I always have. I mean, I couldn't get over that first time she laughed at me. I loved her then. You know, I thought, my God, what would, why is that girl laughing at me? <laughs> but I thought she was very special even then, <laughs> very special. And I think she and Henry are very happy together. They act like they are, like a couple of kids. And I love that, it's very important to me. And then she, we went out for dinner, you know, she and I, she came over to my friend Ashani had a party for me and Elizabeth came. She slapped her bed and Judy Moore was there, took pictures all night long, all night. I wonder what happened to those pictures. <laughs> and thank that Arnold Elizabeth for getting me into this. It scared me in the beginning. <laughs> then I knew it would be all right. I love her. And anything she does is really okay with me. You can tell her that if you see her. <laughs> I love her. I really do love her. I'll never forget her that first day she laughed at me. You'd remember that too, wouldn't you? Because you wonder why at first. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite color is purple. <laughs> My favorite place to visit is, is San Francisco. But the first place I went was San Francisco, and I did know it got cold in July. And I went off on the 4th of July with just a sleeveless dress and folds to death. The whole weekend I was there. <laughs> yes, I love San Francisco, though. I always loved Clark Abel. I don't know how could anyone not like him? My favorite song? Oh, Farewell to Thee. Isn't that strange? It is, though. People do laugh at my hat. Everybody does wear a hat, I think. Don't you think that's part of it? I wonder, I don't know. I gotta think that one out. <laughs> I think that, but it was a happy laugh. I don't think they're making fun of me. I just think they're laughing with me. Mm -hmm. That's where I look at it. <laughs> As this young man, some of the first hat I ever bought it was gray and it had flowers all over it. It was Jack McCall's, and I had it. I was in a hotel, down in Ritz-Carlton Hotel, and that man came along with a suitcase in each hand. He was rushing out the door, and he looked up and he saw me in the hat, dropped his suitcase and went up there with me. He said, lady, that's one hell of a hat. Then turned around and walked out the door. It's out his suitcase. And if ever, I have never won anything but Jack McCall. This is one who. Wild, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I have a good time in life. I really do. <laughs> Half a bubble off. <laughs> no, I just thought of it. I just thought of what you asked me. <laughs> it must be true. <laughs> Not a whole bubble. It's just a half a bubble off. <laughs> I need to drink water. That's <laughs> oh, her. <laughs> no wonder we love Judy. <laughs> she has all sorts of reasons. <laughs> oh God. <laughs>
<laughs> but I don't know how I wrote my song. Good. <laughs> You're kind of cute. It's all right to look at you. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> I have to have people around me. That's the secret to everything. <laughs> it's the more people, the better. But you have to, I have to have people. It's that they have a little patience. And I think it'll, and to keep working. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up.